what are some phrases or words you want to hear during sex? Um, <laughs> your, you know what feels so good. <laughs> We're your besties in your ear. Back for another episode of Mean Girl Pod. Welcome back to another episode of Mean Girl Pod. Dun, dun, dun. (laughs) Why? I don't know. Like, why not? How how do you feel this morning? I feel so good. Half my face is numb. How do you feel? I feel good. Um, I feel bad for your face, though. I was just eating a gummy bear and my crown popped out. Yeah, Alex sent me a selfie at, I don't know, like 8 a.m., which is odd because usually you don't check your phone before 10. Yep. And whenever you, if I ever get a text from you before 10, I'm like, I'm like, who died? What is it? <laughs> and I get like a selfie from her at the dentist and she's like, my crown broke. I'm like, I, I know. You can't, you're, I just said uh, before the podcast started, I was like, Alex's theme of life right now is can't catch a break. I know, but I'm like, I'm like, oh, more adversity. <laughs> what else can happen? Bring it on. <laughs> Gets hit by a car. And I'm like, that's too much. Don't say that. Whoa. Don't even put that in the universe. Remember the TikTok trend that was like um, calling God to make sure I'm not on his list of strongest. Strongest fighters. Warriors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got plucked. How does it feel to be God's favorite? <laughs> he was like, yo, you want a little bit of something, something? Here. And I was like, oh, thank you. We are not God's favorites this month. <laughs> like, you don't need that crown. You're always hardest on the ones you love the most. The coach is on the tough, the, is always toughest on the best player. Whenever my uh, dad's mean, not mean to me, but like whenever I like, <laughs> whenever my dad's mean to me. Uh, this is the daddy issue episode. <laughs> no, we've got great dads. Whenever my dad and I um, have a little banter back and forth, <laughs> <A little banter. laughs> I'm always like, Remember when I was really young and you said you're always hardest on the ones you love the most? Remember that at this age. <laughs> and he's like, mm-hmm. I see what you're doing there. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'd always be like, but, Dad, you do that. And he'd be like, do as I say, not, not, not as, as I, I do. do. I'm always like, oh. <laughs> there's like a um, oh, really there's funny. a saying for everything. You know what we were talking about this weekend? What? You know how when someone's like, no offense, but. And it's like, no, mm Because, like, clearly offense. Always. Or like, not going to lie. Like, okay, so somebody this weekend was like, not going to lie, but it's really hot outside. And somebody was like, why would you lie? Like, not gonna, <laughs> like why would you lie about that? Like, not gonna, of course you're not going to lie. Or when people are like, what's, what, I, I do this all the time. Respectfully. No. But it, I, I'll be like, actually though, you're right. And I'm like, why do I say actually though? Like, you are just right. Or like, actually though, you look so good right now. Like, what do you mean actually like, though? As opposed to not. Literally. Okay, well, duh, literally. Like, what do you mean figuratively? You know what I have a hard time with that my brain still can't understand? Is it I... (laughs) Science. Well, yeah. (laughs) Math. (laughs) History. English. I was good at social studies. I was good at... uh, I was okay at English. Don't tell me where a comma goes in this sentence, though. No. I I still don't even know the difference between T-O-T-O-O. I only know the T-W-O. Yes. That's the only one I got. I got theirs down. Literally, when I text. Literally. Literally. <laughs> when I text, I say, as well, because I never know which no! two to use. <laughs> I'll be like, I agree as well. Instead of I agree too, because I don't know which two. Like, my, one of my good friends, she's so good at English, and she always calls me out, and I'm like, okay. But, like, I just, you don't know. I don't know. Well, you I, don't know. And I don't care to know either. Correct. It's fine. Um, but I have a hard time with, is it I could care less or I could not care less? Like, we're like, I couldn't care less. Okay. So if you're, we're not caring less, I could not care less. Okay. I, I could not care less. Okay. I say, I said one time in my story, I was like, I couldn't care less. And someone's like, it's, you could care less. It's or, both, right? I don't know. Because like, if, if you, if it's impossible that you could care any less because you care the least amount, I could not care less. Right? Like, I could not possibly care less than I do right now. I don't know. Like, it was... And I could care less is, like, I could achieve less caring. So I was right then. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, you ever have those things where someone tries to teach you something, but no matter how hard you try, your brain's literally, like, not today. You're not understanding what that person has to say. Oh, man. I have to read things so many times. You want to know my DM of the week? What? When I put Joey up on my story, and I was like, questions for us, and this girl slid in. She was like, wow, you must really want people to speculate. And I was like, that he's gay? (laughs) You want people to... (laughs) 
She was like, listen, I'm so sorry. I had no idea his sexuality. <laughs> oh, my God. And I was like, don't misgender. My favorite thing is when someone will DM the Mean Girl Pod account and me the exact same nasty thing. And then I'll look and they're not even following either. I'm like, did you really go out of your way to search Jordan Woodruff and Mean Girl Pod and say the same nasty thing on both accounts? Like, how do you have this much time on your hands? No, like you copy and pasted it? Come on. Come on. And it's so funny, too, because it's like, like... I can't believe you said that. And I'm like, said what? Like, give me some context, girlfriend. Can't believe you said that. My favorite, um, because I was with my family last weekend. And my dad has, like, all these, like, excuses and rules. And I'm always like, can you tell me why, though? Like, can you tell me why, though? And he's always like, uh, he like to flex. He, like, never can tell me why. And I've just realized, like, everyone has all these opinions, but they never have reasons for their opinions. It's like, it's like some, they're just blindly following. Yeah. Yeah. Like, even yesterday with the, the tweet I I took down, which... Oh, you took it down? Well, yeah, because I felt bad. Okay. I, like, I like put I, up a tweet. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just... I mean, it's not. It's really not that big of a deal, but I put up a tweet that was like, we didn't get fired because all the stoolies hate us. And um, everyone was like, <laughs> you guys are so tone deaf and sensitive. And I, like, read it, and I was like, oh, shit. Like, I was just posting that because, like, stoolies literally hate us. Like, our whole comments is, like, get fired, get fired. But, like... People who work here were like saying horrible things about us, and I was like, so I and I deleted it because I felt bad because of Nick, because like our producer Nick, if you guys don't know, he got let go last week, and we love Nick. Oh my gosh! And like a lot of our like a lot we of love every we loved everyone that got let go. We were so upset about that. Yeah, so that's why I was like, that's why I took it down because I was like, oh, I actually felt really bad because I like, didn't even think about hurting our actual let go coworkers. So I was like, oh shit! Like no one else needs to see that. Like that that was that was insensitive, and I apologized. But like everyone who um said nasty things about us i was like but i was like why do you hate us and then they wouldn't respond like this one guy who who used to work here who doesn't was saying like horrible things about me and i was like what did i ever do to you we've never spoken oh and he never responded oh so i'm always like why do the people who hate us the most know the least about us and that's not just us that's the whole internet in a nutshell right people always hate the people they know the least the least amount about well, and I think if you, my left underarm is just like arbitrarily dripping sweat. That's okay. It's just so random because I'm I'm cold. But okay. I I would think if you, yeah, I don't get that. Yeah. Because I guess if you if you if you really like somebody, you learn more about them. I don't know. Yeah, because even like I, I I've really like taught myself. We and we talk about this all the time. But like when I was younger, I used to like be jealous about people that were doing cool things on the internet, and I was like. I don't like them. And I was like, but I don't know anything about them. Why do I dislike them? And I'm like, oh, wait, it's just my own insecurities, duh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I didn't see the thing. And then I went to therapy. <laughs> oh, no, this is just like an overlying thing about like my, my dad, too. <laughs> Being like, he always has all these oh, like your things. Dad. I was like, how do we get back to the dad? He, sorry. Yes, 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 yes. But I'm like, but I'm like, why, dad? And he's just like, ah. Huh? I'm like, give me, give me a reason. Give me some tangibles. Side sources. Site sources. Site the source. And it's just funny because I'm always like, can you at least give me the next? Like, he told me I was high maintenance over the weekend. Oh, what were you doing to, to to receive that comment? Oh, it was just like an overarching thing. Like, you're so high maintenance. And I was like, why? And he didn't give me a reason. Do you think you're high maintenance? No. Do you think I am? No, not at all. Oh, no. You, because the TV turned off? No, sorry. No, I don't. I don't. I, I didn't know if you had made a funny comment or something, like, to, to deserve. Oh, I was just, um getting blamed for something I didn't do and I was like overreacting a little bit he goes you're so high maintenance and I was like why or dramatic I am dramatic I will be the first to say <laughs> you, well you always say that but I'm like that that sounds like a dramatic situation but he's like you're so high maintenance and I'm like I'm like why and then I was like come give me, give me some give me some examples yeah I'm open to feedback I'm open to it I'm willing and able to change and I want to be an active participant and I was like I'm high maintenance in the bathroom correct but that's just you and yourself in there and that's when you can't be, no, that's, is, it, that's, is that not high maintenance? No, but it's, if you're just high maintenance by yourself, like, do you know what I mean? If, if you just involve you and you're, you, that's like highly engaged. True. I'm in on that. That's cool. That's self care. Do you know that I can get ready now in like 15 minutes? I don't know. I can. No, I, I believe you, but only if it's like a, <laughs> like I'm going to just have a day by myself. Correct. Just you. Like, this took 15 minutes. Now somebody else is going to see me. <laughs> like, the internet. I will try a little bit harder. Like, this, um, <laughs> th like, this look took 15 minutes. Not the time someone told us 
Some people use filters in Photoshop on the internet, but you you guys never clearly could because you have clips. <laughs> that goes back to like the, no offense, but. <laughs> no, no offense, but like you guys, we see what you really look like. And oh. I'm like, oh, weird. The backhanded compliments kill me. I love, I love when Alana was like, okay, so what we're gonna do is just dress up, not, not a lot for recording days, but just mascara. <laughs> to you to both of us remember no she was like we'll, we'll start you know like it's recording day i always thought i looked nice <laughs> i couldn't even get i couldn't even flutter the lashes today <laughs> these eyelash extensions are god's gift to earth they are and yours look so natural thank you yes i forget you have them but you know what's scary some days i think about how long do you have eyelash extensions for oh oh the limit does not exist pregnancy but do you know what i mean it's kind of scary to like think about that like do you do it forever you mean yeah is this part of my life yeah oh I would say totally no I think you could, you could grow out of things you might be like one day you might be like I want them off true but I just think sometimes I like think about irrational fears and I'm like okay what if like one day I can't maintain this anymore no you're you're definitely down to go to an irrational fear <laughs> the other day I was thinking about this morning you're like I thought I was never gonna see you again and I was like bitch hell <laughs> <laughs> Did you think that? Let's talk about Pink Whitney, and this is a fun one, you guys, because do you think you and your friends are the ultimate life of the party? Hell yeah! Correct. Nominate them, and you could win a Pink Whitney NYC trip. One lucky winner will receive an epic New York City trip for them, and three friends complete with a tour of, guess what? Barstool Sports! That's so fun. And they can come say hi to us. That's in, that I want to win this. Like, that would be, I would, ugh. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a tour of the office. <laughs> well, you know, well, me? Well, because you're like, I want to win this. Oh, <laughs> that was a joke. I thought you were going to give away a tour. I was like, well, hold on. Okay, <laughs> 10 secondary prize. I love when there's a secondary prize. Like, secondary prize winners will receive Pink Whitney party packs with everything you and your crew need to take your shot and throw the ultimate house party. That's sick. That's so much fun. Especially for college just starting up again. Yeah, like, can you, if you got that through the house. Ugh. It'll be so fun. It's easy to enter. Just go to pinkwhitney.com to enter your info. Nominate your fr Okay, this is how you win. Okay, so nominate your life of the party friends. So I would do you. And describe how they always take the party to the next level. DJ, talk to everyone. They think of creative things. Like, you know, life of the party. For a chance to win the ultimate Pink Whitney NYC trip. And, of course, make sure to head over to your local bar today and order some Pink Whitney shots. That's how you can be the life of the party, too. Serve shots. Duh. And always shoot your shot. And always shoot your shot. Enter for your chance to win the ultimate P Pink Whitney NYC trip at pinkwhitney.com. Alex Bennett, you, what is my number one problem in life? <laughs> abandonment. Fear of abandonment. Fear of my eyelashes <laughs> abandoning me. How much do you spend on eyelashes a year? Oh, God. Okay. Have so you done that? This is going to make you sick. And don't judge me. I won't. I won't know it's a judge free zone. So. Eyelash extension refills are about eighty to a hundred dollars, depending on if you go two or three weeks. Okay, we'll average ninety. And I go about every two weeks. No. Okay. So fifty two. So there's no, there's more than fifty two weeks. So twenty six times eighty. More than fifty two weeks. No, there's I go twenty six times a year because I go every two weeks. Oh, I was like, there's not more than fifty two. <laughs> That's dumb. <laughs> we just said no, there's more than 52. R Sorry, I meant um, there's less than 52. Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> okay, so, so tw 20 2080. There, thank you. Yes, that was what clutch. Wait, wait, we, wait. Need, we needed the math done for us. $2,080 a year. No, I'm not going to lie. That, that was so much less than I thought. That's not that bad. I thought the number was going to be like five grand. Yeah. Oh. I mean, keep getting them. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> That's right, math? That's correct, math. Then yes. You know what's so funny? Oh, no, now we're going to be like, <laughs> there's all these things that I do where I'm like, wow, I'd save so much money if I didn't do them. But then I do the math, and I'm like, I really wouldn't like getting coffee every day. I'm like, I'm just going to keep doing it. If it's below a couple thousand, I'm just going to keep doing no, it. No, right, and that adds up, but it's like, no, nails. That's the nail math, too, because that's every two weeks. 80 and bucks. that's about the price. Mm -hmm. So that settles that. You know, Ames and I, we were discussing flowers for the apartment. Is that in the budget? Well, flowers can be expensive. 17. How often do you get them? Weekly. 17 times 52. <laughs> Ben's like... <laughs> <laughs> We could chop it to eight hundred eighty-four dollars a year. On oh, flowers. that's fine. totally fine. Totally worth it. Totally fine. <laughs> times three. Okay, we can knock it to two. Times two. 
Sixteen hundred. Uh, in the budget. Let's do it. So uh, combine that with the eyelashes, you're at thirty-eight hundred a year. So that's nails and flowers, and those those two things make me very happy. Well, and the thing is, if it makes you happy, it can't be that bad. It's price. Happiness has no price tag. It money cannot buy happiness but things can but it can rent it <laughs> but, but experiences can no but like well so can they, like i'm sticking i'm a better more productive person with a good manicure i have a shittier apartment so i can do cool things like my nails and eyelashes <laughs> <laughs> and tattoos stay forever so those are fine because those are one-offs and the coffee's good too yep and you don't need a new outfit for everything but on occasion if you have a trip and you want to get one then that's fine I have been going a little crazy on the spending because of Italy. You, ha you And so now that is something that requires great preparation. I think you'd be really proud of um, the dresses I've gotten. I cannot, I was going to say literally, I cannot wait to see them. Cannot wait. Because so, like I've never been to Europe, so I like really want to go big. You're not going to book a flight and spend all this money and stop at the fits. Well, and this is like my first ever like vacation I've taken in like two years where like I'm like obviously I'll post um like cool fun content for my own pleasure but like i'm truly like on vacation mode yes and, as you should be and i'm like i'm so excited it's so well deserved you're gonna have the best time wine dessert food names three things i love more you like <laughs> coffee but not more than those things maybe it'd be in the ball hey nobody has better espresso than over there it's exactly <laughs> coffee coffee ocean ocean Five things. Five things. That I love. Good company. I was going to say something, but I can't remember. I hate that. It's going to piss me off. It was about um, spending. Oh, oh, you know how, like, do you have this, like, mentality if, like, anything's under 20 bucks? You're like, yeah, of course I'll buy it then. Yes. I'll, I'll walk up to a store and I'll see something and I'm like, if it's under, and then I'll just pick some random number. <laughs> Today with the crown, I was like, if, it's a, <laughs> if it has a comma, No. <laughs> that's funny oh yeah i'll do that i'll be like if there's a comma and the answer is literally just no do you want to go on a trip if it has a comma no commas no <laughs> my friend's like do you want to go to vegas i'm like mm, send me the total <laughs> there's a comma i'm out <laughs> there's a comma, i can't do it <laughs> anything under a comma you don't really notice because the front number doesn't change it's only a, and like when there's two zero <laughs> and if you add it all up and then it starts to change but <laughs> people need to calm down um but what i was gonna say is that's how i am with with um nails and coffee if, it, if it's like under a year like five thousand i'm like whatever the coffee thing i have started doing at home well i have an espresso so i get coffee at home like every day how'd you get didn't somebody give you that i got it for free yeah <laughs> <laughs> what was that one of my best friends she she got two for her wedding <laughs> That's what it was. and she wouldn't let her return it so she's like, do you want it? I was like, can I pay, give it? She's like, just take it. I remember this moment when you got this. And people were like, oh, look at you just spending money left around. I'm like, I got free. This for free. For free. <laughs> the nicest things I own are literally like for free. Well, also like explain to me how an upfront cost of buying an espresso machine, like you would save so much money. Oh my God. Yeah. I make a coffee every, I mean, like I truly only buy coffee out maybe once twice a week only on days end and why does jordan get iced coffee <laughs> from duncan it's usually just wednesdays it's free on mondays. what coffee's free on mondays shut the fuck up what kind of there's coffee? no way but is it black coffee only like do you have to pay for the add-ins we also can't hear we can't hear her remember oh it's it's, it's a tough pickup oh um intern aim said that coffee is free on mondays and we don't believe her at duncan <laughs> I saw a sign this weekend that said breakfast burritos free tomorrow, and I went back the next day, and this, the sign still said breakfast burritos free tomorrow, so it was like a joke. Well, also, too, people are – it's always like it's free, but then you go there and, like, with a purchase of oh, two drinks. A thousand dollars. It says from every Monday from now until the end of October, Duncan is giving out a freebie. You doesn't say – you got to read it. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> we have to have you we oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> doesn't free medium cup of coffee with a purchase. Uh -huh. That's the thing, though. Like, when, what do you want to purchase? I – I will say, with Starbucks, like, their point system is great. Like, you get, like, free drinks after so many points. Or, like, anything for free. Oh. You know the... No, I don't have the app. You, Alex Bennett, you don't have the Starbucks app? I don't have the app. Why? I just never did it. Like, I, it seemed like such a big thing <laughs> to do. So efficient. 
this is what everyone said. The day I walked to Starbucks with Big Cat, he he walked in and got his coffee, and I went and got in the line, and he was like, use the app. And I was like, I've never had the app. And he was like, it's just like, that's just the most inefficient thing ever. I'm getting more efficient. I have a TSA appointment today because taking off your shoes, and and that's not efficient. So I'm getting more efficient. You couldn't have gotten pre-checked before we traveled the world together like six months ago. Could have, I should have gotten it. Okay, so the Starbucks app, we're going to download it for you after this episode because after like 400 points, you get a, you can get free so many things. Like um, you, f- How many is 400? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't with you. I would say it's probably with your order. I don't know. like I'm adding almond milk. I know, the, the iced coffee with almond milk. Oh, God. I don't know. Maybe, like, ten coffees? That's it? Am I wrong? Ten coffees, and you get... I don't, I don't know if you get ten. I actually always get a Buy ten, get one free? After, like, how many coffees usually do you have enough points to get a free coffee at Starbucks? Like four or five. Four or five. And you have to use your points, I'll say expire. I don't know if a lot of people well, know that. So how long do you have till you use have to use them? You usually have like um uh like so like let's say you I think the max is like let's say five hundred points I think you have until the like a month to use them. Okay, that's pheno- that's a phenomenal incentive. Yeah, good for them. So, but the thing is, you can get f- you can get anything. So I always see people pull it up and they have like thirty six dollars in there. Do you add money to the account? Yeah. So the only way to get points is if you add money to the account, which is so easy. You just put like your credit card in or Apple Pay. Okay, and then you just, like, add it. Yeah, or gift cards. Okay, okay, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'm, um, I'm so down. Like, you couldn't use your credit card and be like, eh. Sometimes I'm such an early adopter. Time. Sometimes I just do, I don't do these, like, very simple things that make a big difference. You're so funny because, like, let's say you wouldn't buy an Uber for $30, but, like, you won't get the Starbucks app. Right. <laughs> and I don't know what that is. But with, what I was going to say is with Duncan, which I love Duncan, they don't, their point system isn't that great. It'll be like, you now earned a free coffee with an order of a breakfast burrito. So it's like, what? No, come on. Star- yeah. it's, I like that Starbucks has given up a little bit more. So that's loyalty. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some, um, I'm just going to give you some um, New York City hacks for, I- like, everyday people because... <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'm just going to give you hacks of life. Like TSA, for example. The fact that you're 30 years old and don't have TSA, I mean, come on. No, it's absurd. I take my shoes off. That's why I, <laughs> I, I'm like, the shoes. Um, i clear. Which actually, like, I, I feel like is just as, I mean. Not every airport has it. And the shoes still have to come off. Wait, not every airport. Oh, shit, I didn't even realize that. Like Miami or somewhere random doesn't have it. What? There's, like, some big airport that doesn't have it. Atlanta? No, they have it. Oh, DFW. They don't have it in the American Terminal. Yeah. Dallas. Dallas, Fort Worth. Which is actually big for you because, like, you live in Oklahoma. Yeah, I go there a lot. Oh. I don't live in Oklahoma. Well, you're from Oklahoma. <laughs> They're going to think I moved. Oh, sorry. No, Dude, you're comments from. Comments are going to be like, oh. Sorry, I still say I live in, like, I'm, I still say, like, Minnesota's home. I'm like, Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota. <laughs> My parents don't even live there anymore. That's so true. You're a nomad. I am. But I'm seeing my grandma this weekend for the first time in six, or what's, how many months ago was Thanksgiving? Oh, gosh. I'm like way more than six, eight. I haven't seen her in eight months. Not 10? 10. 10. 11. Yeah. 10. 10. September, October, November. 10. So I'm excited. I'm so excited for you that this is mom's mom. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she's the one that had the house in Northfield? No. Isn't like, oh, that's my dad's mom. Okay, that's your dad's mom. Okay, so this is the one that lived near you, and you would stay at her house before the airport. Yes. Okay. And the funny thing is, though, is both of my p- dad's f- parents are actually from the Northeast. Like, my mom, yeah, b- born and raised in Minnesota, but her, my grandparents were actually from Rhode Island. And did they, have, did they always live there, or did they move to me? They lived in the Northeast until, like, two years before my mom was born. Okay, okay. Oh, so she's from, she's going back home. Yeah. That is so sweet. So when she comes to Rhode Island, um, which it's hard for her to do because she's getting so old, like my aunt has to come with her. She's visiting like all these, not all, like a few people that she like knew as a kid and like these places that she would go to as a kid. So it's like a really cool thing. I'm excited. That is going to be so special. Yeah. I love that you're getting so much family time. I know. And then after this weekend, my parents go back to Florida already. Oh my gosh. I know. That came out of, that happened so fast. I know. It's going to be October almost. Somebody said the other day, what are you doing for Halloween? And I was like, oh. no, I was just looking on, I guess, 
I think it was social media and like Halloween ads were coming out. I'm like, I'm like, what? The stores got Halloween candy out. <sighs> for it's gonna be Christmas. It, it, it's Christmas. It's like, and the thing is, this time of the year, everyone, you know what? What? I love this time of year. What's wrong with it? Well, a lot of people leave and we'll go home. Like a lot of a lot of my friends will like go home between um, Thanksgiving and like New Year's Eve because it's just so hard to like fly back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But it's not Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> you got some time. <laughs> you go a lot of my friends leave this time of year. When? It's, After Thanksgiving. It's September 6th. <laughs> <laughs> At least two and a half months left. You can tell I'm gonna. I'm on the way to getting my period because my irrational thoughts are really getting it's to me. Like I was like, oh, you're okay. Yeah, that people do go home then. Yes. But that's the best. Yeah, I love this time in New York though. Oh my God, same. Like a light sweater not today. It's very hot. When I, you would have died. I don't know how the weather was in the Hamptons last weekend, but in Rhode Island, I was wearing like a sweatshirt and shorts at night and like sweatpants sometimes. It was sweatshirty, yeah. And then in New York today, it's 96. Today's <laughs> oddly hot. But then it's going to cool. It's going to, next week's going to be in the 70s. Okay. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Leggings? When I get back from Italy, it's going to be leggings season. Is that leggings? Is 70 leggings or are we wearing shorts? I mean, I would still wear shorts because I run. My body temperature is like a 14-year-old boy going through puberty, yeah. but you probably could pull it off. Okay. I'm like always just hot. My left side's hot right now, but other than that, I, I typically run cold. Are you having a stroke? I think my face is like oh. freaking out. It's coming back. I'm yeah. sounding better. No, you, you sound so different than when you, when you first started. Okay, good. Yeah. I know. You want to do our questions? Yeah. For the boys? For the boys. Um, yeah, I'm going to hand you my phone because... I would not want to read aloud to the class. I'm too scared to read. My, like, fifth grade teacher would be so proud of me. Why? Because I would, whenever, you know, when, did, you, did you guys do that where everyone had to read aloud and you would do paragraphs? Popcorn. Awful. No, I'm not kidding. Alex. Awful. PTSD. Same. When you, when you know it's your turn to read the paragraph, I would read it the whole time and I would review it and review it and I would always mess it up and I just felt like such a loser. When I was doing popcorn, I would like read it so far ahead to prepare myself because we, it wasn't like, I never knew which one was going to be mine. Yeah. And then I would realize by the end of the class, I didn't even listen because I was so focused on making sure I knew every word. Yeah. I would be re, I always, for some reason I knew mine. Oh, because we would read around the room paragraph by paragraph so I would count. Not us. It was fully like popcorn Ames, Popcorn Ben, Popcorn Alex, Popcorn Jordan, and you wouldn't know, like, the order of it. No, like, or they would, like, draw your name out of a hat, or, uh, like, a bowl. I bet some parents these days go up to the school and they say, don't call my kid to read. Because then it's also, like, a... It's, it's terrifying. It's terrifying. I never knew how to pause on the sentences and... They're... Every kid is traumatized by reading the class, part yes, of the class. For sure. I just whistled through my teeth. <laughs> Because I didn't wear my retainer last night. When you're getting married, it's not just about the big day. It's about all the days along the way. And Zola is here for all of them. You guys know Jordan and I love weddings. It was this time last year we were in Cape, Cape Cod, Cod. Yeah. for a wedding. Weddings are the best. They're such a great time. The anticipation, the dressing up, the dancing, the food, the cake, the bands, all of it. And you know what I really love? When the couple uses Zola to plan their wedding, it means a stunning save the date that you keep on your fridge. I've got one on there right now for my best friend's wedding. Using Zola means gift that they actually want and gifts you actually want to give, whether it's fancy kitchenware or contributing to a cash fund, maybe for their honeymoon. And it means to get in the romantic mood by looking at those adorable photos of the happy couple on their Zola website, which I love to do. I love engagement photos. And find out where you need to be without having to text the bride or the groom or the mother of the bride. A million different annoying questions. Everything is on the website. So if you're planning a wedding, do everyone a favor and use Zola. Your guests will love it almost as much as you do. Start planning today at Zola.com. That's Z-O-L-A.com. Okay, ready? Yeah. You can also, you can pick any of them. I just... You can, like, go to any of any of the... Popcorn. Yeah, popcorn it. Oh, my God. Do you have how many favorites? One, two, three, four, five, three, six, nine, twelve. Well, they're 15, the questions 16. from today. I have, like, f a thousand favorites. Oh, those. my first favorite is the my date of birth for astrology. And then I think it's my TSA number. <laughs> 15, 5, 4, 358? Uh, yeah, 358. Okay, cool. Are <laughs> you reading my social for a second? I was like, what? <laughs> Four four zero. <laughs> I was like Alex, but I don't have that saved. Obviously, <laughs> obviously, you could ruin my life with my favorited photos. <laughs> For sure. Hide them. 
Oh, like in the hidden album? Yeah, yeah that's smart. Okay. Oh, since this is the daddy episode. <laughs> don't say Don't say that. This is a daddy episode. This person was holding my phone this weekend, and my dad texted me. He's under daddy, and I like popped up daddy, and she's like, "Please tell me that's your father." And I'm like, "That's my father." Because imagine, do you call your dad daddy in real life? No, I don't okay. know. I have a mommy and daddy in my phone. It just always has been. <laughs> and that one time, I tweeted a screenshot from my dad golfing. Kirk was like, "Oh yeah, the problem is daddy," and I was like, "That is the problem. It's so weird." Okay, <laughs> hi girls. I'm about to be a girl dad. Smiley face. That's really cute. What are some things your dad dads have taught you over the years? Um, <laughs> you're always hardest on the ones you love. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, oh God, do you have anything? Okay, well the number I'm trying. To, my brother and I will always be like, we can say what my like if my dad's like starting a story, we'll both be like. And when you look in the mirror, make sure you know who's looking back at you. My dad would always say, so, okay, I can think of two things right now. When you look in the mirror, always make sure you know who's looking back at you. Doesn't have to be the most popular opinion, but you always know who you are and you'll be okay. He would tell me that. And then number two, he would always say, like, you know, people like, it doesn't matter what anyone thinks of you. Mm -hmm. He'd always be like, no, but it does if you value their opinion. Like, you don't have to necessarily change who you are because of it but you can take that into account because to a certain extent your reputation is who you are yeah i always loved that i feel like my dad's taught me so many things over the years that like have like really shaped who i am but like it's hard for me to think of it at the top of my head but i f i don't i'm oh god i have to like think about this but the biggest thing you know what my dad would do what whenever i would have because girls, we have more, I don't like the term drama, but a little bit more drama that would happen at school. Mm -hmm. And girls would hurt your feelings. Or, like, you could feel bullied or left out or something. And I always knew I could go sit with my dad and he would make me feel better. Because he would tell me, like, I know you're sad, but those things don't matter. Like, if you're being a good person, it all works out. Yeah. And, like, if girls were gossiping or something and I was, like, left out of it, he'd always sit me down and he'd be like, it's such a big picture than this. And he made me feel so – my dad always made me feel safe. Still till this day. Mm -hmm. He'll make me feel safe. Yeah. I think dads have a very unique way of making their daughters feel so loved, too, because in this world, like, I feel like so many times we're hurt by men. But my dad always made me feel loved and – always helped me recognize my worth but in a very like non-traditional way I can't really describe it yeah that makes sense though it's, yeah it's like the his physical presence and just like the way he would hug me and tell me he was proud of me it was just like you could tell it was genuine mm -hmm. and it's different than what a, that a mom can tell you because like you know what I mean your mom's a girl too so it's like when a when, when a guy who truly loves you tells you something it, it hits so different or a man I should say because that's your father right <laughs> yeah so it always like makes me want to cry almost. But if my dad, Ames and I talked about this the other day, but if my dad, you know, they, there's not, it's not, um, you're a, you're a mommy's boy. Mm -hmm. It's the term is, oh, are you a daddy's girl? Yeah. And I always feel like those girls are kind of like strong and have a little bit more like buck to them. But if my dad says the words still till this day, I'm proud of you. I can run through a brick wall. I'm like, dads don't understand the impact they can have on a daughter. Mm -hmm. Like that just makes these little girls feel like they can conquer the world. I always see these TikToks and it's like, my husband always wanted to be a boy dad so he could teach him how to play football, blah, blah. And then it like shoots to a, a screen of them playing with their daughter. And it's the cutest thing ever. I feel like a girl dad is just the most precious thing in this world. It is. Like the opportunity, like, okay, so what are some things your dads have taught you? It's like the opportunity there is endless, limitless. Yeah. I and it's impactful. Yeah. So that's a job. People should write in and tell us what their dad. I wish it was Father's Day, so that'd be really cute to post. But still, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a certain day. Like, write in and tell us how your father has impacted you in your life. Yes. And we can read them next episode. That would be. And we were saying, too, like, when you get to a certain age where you're, like, doing adult-like things. You've mm -hmm. got your first job or you're trying to figure out your finances, things like that. You call your dad and he's like, okay, mm -hmm. how long do you have? And he walks you through it. And he just, like, loves that aspect, I feel like, of his, like, little girl. And she's all grown up. Every girl's dad is their first financial advisor. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, I didn't know who to call, so you called him. And it's like, no, it's so sweet. That's really cute. It makes me miss my dad. I'm going to see him, though, tomorrow. So I know. I'm, I'm like, let him text mine. <laughs> cute. I love that. That was a good question. 
Okay, why nice guys are a turnoff or are good girls just hard to come by? Okay, so I've learned throughout my time of dating, about my career, which actually dating is a career, so yes. I don't think nice guys are ever a turnoff. For me, I think it goes back to nice guys equal secure and happy and healthy. And if you're not in that phase of life, you are turned off by that. Because when I was insecure or avoidant or didn't actually deep down think I was like good enough for a relationship or want a relationship, when I found a guy who was secure and happy and healthy and nice, I'd be like, ew, gross, bad boy. Yeah, because I knew deep down and subconsciously it would never work out. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm happy and secure and know my worth, blah, 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 I see a nice guy and I'm like, that is so hot. I don't think nice guys finish last. No, no, no. I think I think nice guys win at a certain time and a and a certain age. Yeah. And I and I don't think that there's a set age on that. I don't think it's like 28 nice guys start. I think it takes the nice guy with a good foundation and then meeting a girl at that time mm-hmm. who's like I'm looking for certain qualities for the rest of my life. Also, I think a lot of fuck boys so to speak turn into really nice guys Mm -hmm. that or they they can like I think anything can happen yeah and I and I don't think good girls are hard to come by or nice guys finish last I think it's like the perfect combination of timing and then it can work because how many times have you met a couple that have been together for 10 years you're like oh my god he was the worst but now you're looking at like the nicest guy ever yeah so it's just like anything can happen you just have to like shift it around I think too nice just scares a lot of girls Mm -hmm. because they don't think that they're actually like worthy of being with somebody nice yeah and you want what you can't have and yeah all those things so I, I i think if you're nice never change who you are be nice like you will succeed you might just be in a season of life or surrounding yourself with the wrong girls yeah and if you were like a nice guy and then you find that girl that just wants a nice like mm-hmm. that's your girl but if you are with a girl that doesn't want a nice guy and then you're trying to change who you are that's not your girl like yeah. that doesn't last forever i think the the sexiest thing in a guy right now is like thoughtfulness, caringness, and consideration, being nice. Like, I think that is so hot. But ask me six months ago, I'd been like, gross. Yeah, like a a non-nice guy might be a short-term fix, short-term gain. Yeah. But the nice guy is long-term greedy. Yeah, and every, every, oh, every, um... Everyone wants to marry a nice guy, too. Like, who, who's like, I want to marry a mean guy. I have the fuck boy forever. That'll be chaotic. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. How come in the beginning the sex is great and infrequent and then just slows down? Because sex takes work mm-hmm. and pivoting and communication. And it's not something that will, I don't think, naturally always come easy. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to talk about it and you have to spice it up in the bedroom and get a little bit creative and keep the flame alive. Yeah. It's like if you work out, if you, if you just started working out and you're, you're running every single day, eventually you're just going to plateau. Like you got to change it up Mm -hmm. and you got to make sure that like, cause everyone gets stuck in a routine. We're creature of creatures of habit. We love routine. We love doing the same thing, but after a while you will get bored and sick of that routine. So you have to go to your comfort zone and try new things, be open to trying new things. The communication thing is everything. It's everything. And I think complacency is the enemy when it comes to, like, intimacy. Yeah. Like, sit, just, like, assuming you're okay and, like, it'll work itself out. Or, like, no, it's more his job or her job. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, it's both your jobs. Yeah. And never, never be too afraid to just – like, I, I always think – why not kind of like okay so if you come home from the from work that day or something like why not just go cuddle with your partner like i think when people are intimate it may it solves so many problems Mm -hmm. i think people probably i think i could be speaking out of like no okay I think I get what you're saying though. Like a lot of people, like in their heads, pops off. Like when, when I when I had a boyfriend in five years, in my head I thought, oh, we only can have sex in the evenings. Boxed in. I never was like, why don't we have sex before work? Why don't we have sex right when he gets home from work? Yeah. Like he was always like, we only can have sex 
after dinner once it's dark. Like I had all these like fake rules in my head. And it also, I, and I don't know where that, where they came from. It, that, that's what you were talking about earlier. It's like, where did you get that sex happened at 10 30 PM before you went to bed? Who said that? I always think about that movie. Uh, I think it's, the, this is 40. Yes. And he's always like, if the gray sweatpants are on, we're not having sex. So he like run. I could be, this could be the wrong movie, but he like runs home. He's like, I have to get home before she puts on the gray sweatpants. Cause that means we're not having sex. And it's like a scene where she's like tying them. And he's like, no, that's it's like, why, though. It's like, why can't we have sex once the gray sweatpants are on? Right. And like, why not? I almost wish people would like set an alarm every month. And it was like, do something sexy. So you text like your significant other and you're like, we're doing staycation tonight. And you like light candles. Yeah. And you just make it because I think what happens is the longer it goes without it, the more you get, you get okay with it. Like it takes effort and it takes work. Yeah. It's like, don't let it get that far away from you. And also listen to your body. Like if you're horny, act on it. I guess. Cause like, that's why people don't like sex. They're like, oh, we, it feels like a chore. Like you have to do it tonight even though you're not in the mood even though you could have been in the mood five hours ago but you're like well it's it's lunchtime i don't have sex over lunchtime right i have to wait until dinner time what do you think about this one time i ran into someone and i don't know why they told me this but they were like me and my <laughs> wife have sex every thursday i'm sure i knew no why because people tell me everything <laughs> <laughs> because you were just standing there <laughs> and i and i so i and i've never really thought about it, but what do you think about that so it's like ev- they know thursday is the day of sex yeah, no, I feel like a lot of couples have their sex days. Oh. Like, I feel like our, our parents' generation was big on that. Do you like that? No. Having a, sec- like a set day for sex? No, because if, when, for, for my personality at least, if I have something that's, like, so routine and rigid, I stop enjoying it. And you bec- then it becomes, like, trash day. And it becomes something I'm checking off my to-do list. Yeah, and then on Wednesday, if you are horny, you're like, no, nah, I'll just wait till tomorrow because tomorrow's Thursday. Yeah. No, I think a uh, surprise is, like, the is when sex is like the most fun yeah that's i like i agree yeah. with that like keep it spicy yeah mean girl is sponsored by better help do you ever feel that you're just trying to fall asleep and suddenly your brain won't stop talking yeah story of my life like it ramps up it's like oh you're in bed i've got some things for you like psych yeah <laughs> good morning do your thoughts start racing right before bed yes in other inopportune moments correct it turns out one great way to make those racing thoughts go away is Simply talk through them. Therapy gives you a place to do just that so you can get out those negative thought cycles and find some mental and some emotional peace. Jordan and I talk about therapy all the time. Probably the most beneficial thing we've both done. Oh my God, my entire life. It's helped us grow. It's helped us talk about our emotions, work through them, get to the other side. It is helpful for positive coping skills, you name it, in therapy. Any, there's nothing you can't work through in therapy. Greenest flag in a man? Correct. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Mean Girl today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Mean Girl. Okay. Talk about how to, in quotes, end it with a girl. If you hooked up two to four times without being a dick looking like a bad guy. Not sure if this is even possible, but I think a lot of guys are put into this situation. Slowly less engaged and not answering, or should we just straight up tell them? Three dates is a really difficult time. They hook up? What do you say? Sorry. Oh, oh, okay, wait. um, Talk about an end it with a girl. If you hooked up two to four times. Hooked up. Oh. I think we should also call that two to four dates and then yeah. you hooked up after them. I think that's easier. That's such like a tricky time because I don't think it has to be this big or I, I, I never, I don't believe in ghosting. Like I never, mm-hmm. I mean, after one date, whatever, but I think around the two to four, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Just send a text and be like, I think you're, I think you're great, but you're, it's not the connection that I'm looking for. Yeah. Simple. And maybe you could read like, you might be able to get away with a slow fizzle because mm-hmm. you both might be on the same page. Yeah. No harm, no foul. You see each other six months later, you're like, what's up? And no big deal. But maybe if one person, this is a guy asking this, so maybe if the girl texts you and is like, hi, like, when do you want to hang out next? Then you address it head on. And you're like, you just kind of let, you read her a bit. Like, he's, he's obviously trying and he wants to be nice, but give, read her, give her the lead, let, read her out. She might be like, yo, 
let's hook up in two weeks. Like she might be like down for that. Or she might be like, hi, like I thought we were going to go on a date. And then you could be like, listen, it's not really for me. Yeah. Like a while back I was thinking of how to end it with a guy after we, we, we went on like five dates. It wasn't that big of a deal. And my friends were like, don't worry about it until he asks you to hang out next. Cause for all you know, he could be wanting the same thing. It could be that slow fizzle. And that's what I did. I just waited until he asked to hang out next. And it was so much easier because then I could, I was just like, I really enjoyed getting to know you, but it's not, it's just not the connection I'm looking for. And it was so simple. Easy yeah. peasy lemon squeezy. Don't overcomplicate it until it's complicated. Yeah. And I think at four dates, you don't owe someone that much yet. It, no, I agree. Yeah. And she can't be like, we went on four dates. It's like, <laughs> not chill. Four dates. So that's, that's not. As, as the guy in the room, I think the slow fizzle is definitely the way. Um, Cause if you go out of your, like, if they say something, you could definitely say like not feeling it. But if you go out of your way, to say, hey, like, I'm no longer interested, the response will always be, well, like, well, I wasn't interested either. Like, what do you, what do you mean? Like, people will flip it. Um, yeah. I've seen that happen a bunch of times. Like, avoid tapping the ego if you don't have to. Exactly. Yeah. And she might even catch your drift. If you don't text her, she might be like, got it, got it. Exactly. Let's not. She'll agree it's yeah. unspoken. But if you say it out loud, then the response is like, well, why would you say that um, I didn't want to in the first place? And then it's like... She screenshots it to her friend. Exactly. She's like, excuse me, like I, I'm dating seven people. And it's like, well, okay, well, hold on. Yeah. So true. That the Four dates is such a tricky time. Yeah, like, yeah. It's such, like a, it's such a limbo f period phase of like... Because five, six, you might you could be talking a bit. Yeah. Like you guys might be like really into each other, but four is like we're... Okay, so just this guy, don't... Go, slow and steady. Yeah. Slow Less fizzle. is more. Yeah. But keep up with it. Don't be a dick. He clearly I, doesn't want to be. I didn't even think about the that, that, that I've been that girl. <laughs> Her being like, no, excuse me. I didn't even want to. Yeah. <laughs> girl, let me show you my roster. I don't like you either. Yeah. And he's like, I just was trying to be nice. <laughs> she like texts all these guys. He's like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Screenshots it and it's like everywhere. And he's like, I was just literally trying to get ahead of it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slow fizzle until someone. <laughs> slow it down, dude. Until someone intentionally asks you to see, to see you again. <laughs> now, if she starts going crazy, like you're disrespecting. Then you could be like, okay, I'm not that into you. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, God. Um, okay. Now let's talk about love. Be totally in love with someone who has baggage or marry the clean, safe, clean slate. Marry the one you you fall in love with. And, like, also, what what's this baggage? Like, I feel like everyone has baggage. Like, I, I actually made a joke the other day. I'm like, my baggage has now been turned into a carry-on. Correct. <laughs> I've, got, I've got less baggage. Okay, this is what I think. Like, okay, marry the one with baggage. The the caveat there is, thank God they got it out of their system. The clean slate. Then you start, there's like, but she's got such a clean slate. Like, she's an angel. Okay, she might be a ticking time bomb. It's like, there's always the other side. So, find the one that's, if, it, if you're compatible, no matter what it is, baggage, clean slate, it will work. Well, and it's like, I need to know what type of baggage because... Every person has baggage from their from their life, but it's like, how are they dealing with it on a daily basis? They have a lot of baggage, but are they going to therapy every day to better themselves? Are they working through it? Do they have, like, action items? Or are they someone who's, like, just, like, wherever they go, they're just, like, exploding? Because don't marry that person. Right. But I think baggage means it's it's behind you. I mean, but some people consider, like, let's say you get married to someone and, like, their ex-wife is crazy. Like, that's kind of, like, baggage. Right. And, and that might be... Or their ex-husband. Not so... And that might be a sign. Like, yeah. I guess if it's... And if it's moral baggage, too. Like, she's cheated on everyone she's been with. I don't know if we're going to put a bet out there. Might happen. But now, if we're talking about... And she's talking baggage of, like, 75 exes and maybe she slept around a lot. And she's like, oh, man, I used to just be wild. Okay, yeah. great, fine, fabulous. Yeah. No problem. Like, that's not a moral issue. Yeah, but I, I don't think you should marry the safe, clean option just because, like, love is love. And if you love – like, and also, like, to, like, when you're in a relationship, like, you guys are partners and you can work through things together. And chemistry is – Chemistry makes people want to work through things. Chemistry makes people want to be better for each other. But if you're like slightly less compatible, but she is a clean slate, it's like that clean slate's not going to get you through that tough time. Also, like you're going like, to, after a year, you're going to be like, well, I'm bored. I don't actually really love you. Yeah, <laughs> right. I just did it because it like, you can't, you can't pick the piece of paper, the resume. And if it's easy, it's usually easy things are never worth it. Like if it's like that easy and perfect. Right. You're going to get bored. Right. You're going to get married and be like, well, this is now what? Yeah. Be in love with the best someone either. 
Yeah, but just a li- I, I, that's such a loaded question because I don't know what that baggage is. Yeah, what if the baggage is a f- profound fear of eyelashes <laughs> and you can't spend the money every year? If, like, they said I can't. You cannot buy eyelashes for the rest of your life. I can't marry them. Can't marry anybody that tells you you can't. I'm like, do you want me to be ugly for the rest of my <laughs> life? <laughs> Billy Bob? <laughs> Billy Bob, what do you want me to do? <laughs> also, I'll buy them myself. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Um, okay, why do girls hold their BFs to standards they never held their past hookup guys to? Because they didn't love their past I hookup mean, guys. <laughs> why did I favor that one? I'm sorry. Because they like you. Because <laughs> th- th- when someone holds you to standards, that means they care about you and like you. A hookup was a hookup. They don't care. Think about with your friends. Like, the people you don't actually care about, you don't really give two fucks what they do on a regular basis. But the people you love, you hold to high standards. Yeah, I don't hold my social friends to, like, these massive standards. <laughs> like, are you being a good person today? But my best friend, I'm like, are we being good? I'm surprised you read that. I was like, what? I'm surprised I read that, too. Okay. Um, what are some phrases or words you want to hear during sex? You are so hot. Um, <laughs> your, you know what feels so good. <laughs> I feel like I have like two children looking at me. Not because you guys, because they're newer to the <laughs> When Alana was in the room, I never thought twice about it. <laughs> We'd be like riffing off these. But like, your pussy feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even. I can't. I can't. I have like sixty four in my head, and I'm like, Ben, earmuffs. I'm like, ben, you're a child. Ben, Ben's um, our intern helping um. us produce the pod. <laughs> even with Nick, sometimes I'd be like, I have stage fright right now. <laughs> I can't um, even look at you. Look at the wall. I think the biggest thing is like make the make the girl feel beautiful. Yes. You're so what? You're so <laughs> stunning. But like not over the top, like. I, oh, yeah, right, 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 right. Do you like my... What? Cock in your... <laughs> like that. <laughs> like, make the girl feel beautiful. Yes, and just, you know what, honestly, I'm pretty sure if it pops in your head and you say it out loud, yeah. it's, we're going to have a chance. I love the ones around the body. Like, your body is so sexy. Like, you look so beautiful. Like, oh, my God. Hands on the hips. I love your hips. Like, you could do things like that. Yeah, your your butt feels so good. Am I choking you too hard? <laughs> You know you're going to regret saying that. It was a joke. There, <laughs> Kate, you don't have to cut it. But, like, that, those are, like, my favorite things is, like, when the guy makes you feel like the hottest girl alive. And the, Yeah, correct. And no girl is ever going to not want to f- hear how hot they are. Ever, especially when they're naked. So, like, if you're a guy and you struggle on, let's say, just, like, compliment their body like crazy. Yeah, and, t- like, just touch a part and then be like, you have the sexiest, you have the sexiest. hands. Yo, are those bigger than average? <laughs> Can you imagine a guy's like touching my feet or hands? Damn, you have some sexy feet and hands. Those really turn me on. Yo, that's big. I'm like, why? Because they're bigger than yours? <laughs> <laughs> hand, you do, a, you do a hand competition in the middle of it. <laughs> You're like, quick pause for a. They're getting like turned on. They're like, wow, it really turns me on that your hands are bigger than your mine. Hands are bigger than mine. <laughs> What's what you're saying? If we could share shoes. <laughs> to say the funniest thing ever but i can't no no let's move past that one okay would you rather have a thoughtful gift or an expensive gift i love this question <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> i want a fucking rolex and the answer is a purse <laughs> no um thoughtful all day long so i was actually telling um I, and i told my parents this too i was telling someone this the other day i'm at a point in my life where I'm I'm like very lucky to like be somewhat financially stable where if I want something I'll just I'll get it for myself or I'll figure out a way to want it someday and I tell my parents this too because like for Christmas they're like what can we get you blah, blah blah and I don't want like clutter and meaningless things like I remember in, and this is high school I remember like my boyfriend would give me like bath and body works lotion I'm like for what so I can get a rash on my body right no the bath and body I so I'm like an experience or a thoughtful gift. Mm-hmm. I would much rather get a card describing how you feel and how much, like, how in love you are with me mm-hmm. than you trying to, like, put together this, like, crazy extravagant gift I'll never wear or touch or use. Okay, let me, let me ask you this way. Would you rather have a bag you really want, the black and white Fendi one, mm-hmm. or a thoughtful gift? So they're going to nail the expensive gift or the thoughtful gift. 
I still think I'm going with thoughtful because I kind of have a weird and, and this this will be different I think when I'm married but I have a weird at this time in my life like I feel weird about a guy my age buying me something that expensive okay I feel like I would oh, I and this is a horrible thought mindset like there's something I, I obviously need to work on in therapy but I would feel like I almost owe them something mm-hmm. and I don't want to ever feel like I owe someone something fair so I'm gonna go with the thoughtful gift I would much rather buy the bag myself I'm gonna go with a one to ten ratio so 10 times like if they're gift givers mm-hmm. thoughtful yeah. like a car just even a you know what a thoughtful uh, uh post-it note like a morning or like a i got you a little candle and like saw that you were almost out of a candle mm-hmm. 10 of those and i don't want gifts all the time like that's not my active or that's not my love language uh, but yeah, like yeah. but like 10 of the and then every once in a while like a i'm really proud of you here's this something like that yeah. is totally fine but thoughtful over expensive every day there's a time and a place i feel like for expensive like five-year anniversary or something like you yeah. can do it then oh my god yeah and if i'm dating someone or married to someone for five ten years i would love some jewelry yeah yeah i just on this one i don't know like the timeline so so yeah. kind of read the room but I don't want any guys. I don't want my dad who's been married to my mom for 40 years here in this being like, so a card's good? No, no, no. That marriage, no. this is not people who are married. Like, when I'm married, you can get me whatever, but, like, in a relationship. But also, I think the other thing is, like, if you're getting a bag every two months, like, that's also a no, 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 like, new. No. Yeah. Like, ratio it out. Yeah. Or make, it depends, I guess, too, on, like, the situation. Like, let's say you just, like, you just hit, like, a major milestone. Like, you, you started your own company. You hit this major milestone. And, like, to celebrate, they bought you, like, this really expensive, like, watch. Like, whatever. Cool. And you've always wanted it, and it symbolizes that for you. Yeah. But not, not we're not spoiling. I love a love letter. I melt every time. Just something that was, like, I noticed you did this a lot, and I got you that. It's, like, that's – that – a bag's never going to really make you want to cry, but I feel like you could tear up with, like, words that somebody said because that comes from the heart. Like, not yeah. everyone can do that. If I like a guy and he literally writes, like, four words on a card and gives it to me, it could be like, Jordan, I hope you have a great day. Dash. Billy Bob. I will save that forever. Because he thought about that. Yeah. It came from the heart. I have all, not anymore, but I, did you have a box when you were in high school of all the stuff, like, your boyfriends would give you? I feel like a lot of girls have boxes. Yeah, I have a box of cards and things, yes. Yeah. So, like, when I graduated college, I, like, I hate to say this, but I threw away all my high school. And then after college, I threw away all my college. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm, like, starting that box again. Yeah. And, like, it's just, I remember I would would save, like, in high school, like, movie tickets and, like, cards and all these things and, like, knickknacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they mean, they're they're meaningful. Yeah, because did I ever tell you that my five-year boyfriend, he was in the army and he, like, went away and he wrote me a letter, like, every week? Now, yeah, you did tell me that and that, I think, is, like... That was cool. No, no. no. I mean... Right. Yeah. That's cool, though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, like, moved on with stuff. He's married, happy. Like, oh, that's I'm, that one. Okay, yeah, yeah. same person. Right. That'd <laughs> yeah. be weird. She doesn't have those anymore. She threw them away. Yeah. So odd. It's time to move <laughs> His on. His wedding photos, and you're like, and here's my cards. Yeah. Okay, is that the last question? That's so, it. I have, okay, so I have a question for you. Okay. Meet Wood. Mmm. Wood. Because we would. <laughs> the lineup of personal grooming products specifically, specially formulated to make your man smell like a better man. It's time for him to level up from some weird gels and even weirder smells. It's time for him to treat his body like the dignity it demands and that you expect. It's time for him to understand what, well, simply put, giving a damn smells like. And we keep these in the office, and you and I have, but I've used them. Oh, my God. I I used them on Most Dangerous Games last year, and I loved the way it smells. The green cap, I can't remember the name, is my favorite scent ever. I, like, was, like, sniffing it last week. Yeah, and the low, like, (laughs) it all, it all is amazing. I mean, it's for guys, but, like, great for girls. And the most attractive thing is when a guy smells good, because I would then (laughs) do them. (laughs) Shop Wood's full assortment of men's grooming products for hair, body, and beard. Now at getwood.com, G E T W O U L D.com, and use code Mean Girl for 15% off your first purchase. Wood grooming. It's time to smell like a better man. So, on, I was going to make a TikTok out of this, but we're going to, we can do both. Um, so, I saw this TikTok, and I'll give them credit. Well, of course, I'll give them credit, but I remember who they are. They're ca- I think it's, they're called like the Relatables. Okay. And they did this TikTok where it was like um, things that guys do that means that they like a girl and it was just them going back and forth and it was the funniest thing ever because i was like oh yeah like 
oh okay. my god so i was like popcorn what if we did like things that um things that girls do that mean that they like you okay and okay. make make it like his niche and like okay like first one they will ask to borrow a sweatshirt and never give it back okay. they'll leave a toothbrush at your place Ooh, that's a good one. Or they'll let you keep a tooth, toothbrush at their place. They will bring you to dinner with their friends. They will uh, spray your clone on all their clothes when you come over. They will pin your text and put a contact photo. <laughs> <laughs> the pinning of the text. The pin. They'll let you eat their food. That's a big one for me. <laughs> I hate sharing food. I agree. They'll put snacks at your place that you like. Ooh, yeah. They'll conform to your diet. Mm -hmm. Like if, if a guy was, if I was dating a guy who's gluten-free, I would start eating more gluten-free for him. That's not, would you do that for me? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's been two years and she hasn't yet. It still makes fun of my diet. I still eat your gluten-free bagels. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and those are good. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, 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 she'll stop going on dates with other guys. Um, she'll, uh, she'll start like, uh, so, like, let's say you're dating a guy, and he's like, my favorite XYZ order is this. She'll start ordering it to see if she likes it and probably start drinking, like, the same coffee orders as you or stuff. Stuff like that. Okay. She'll make an effort with your friends. Yeah. Like, DM, follow them, DM them, like, kind of come into your world. Yeah. She'll, um, she'll uh, let you, or no, she'll backpack you. Mm. Like, when, you, when you're cuddling, she'll let you be the small spoon. Mm. She'll put you on her Instagram feed or Instagram story, at least. A slight, subtle bit yeah she'll not wear makeup around you that's a good one mm -hmm. she will i feel like going with you on an errand that isn't fun like mm. returning something at the post office yes. I, I did that with my current girlfriend i realized she started liking me that's, like, cute. that's actually so true that's, really cute. that's actually facts and she'll do things for yeah, just you like go to like random stuff that she'll isn't fun or exciting she'll go to the hardware store with yeah, you yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or be like kind of start to coexist with you or and almost be like how can i help okay i could do that for you like i could take your dry cleaning because i'm just going anyways one time a guy went to blue mercury with me that's a skincare that's store nice that's that's really sweet actually and i was like he likes me he i think he might like me <laughs> yeah he will um slot you she will let you slot her on a prime day a thursday friday saturday sunday like she'll clear her schedule yeah she doesn't have anything else really going on she'll sleep oh this is a big one for me she'll sleep over at your place on a school night on a school she'll not work out she'll give up her routine at the gym for you <laughs> that's when i know i really like someone is when i i like put my routine out the window like oh yeah 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 yeah. you become less regimented because you like them so much do you ever watch sex in the city no and i keep saying i'm gonna stuck it that is my hobby now so there's this one episode where miranda miranda's the redhead the lawyer she's the most like routine to like type a person on the show and she works out in cycles every morning and there's this episode where she's dating and i'm not spoiling anything for you because like this is all like at the whole world knows this um when she starts dating this new guy named steve and he just he's a bartender and he just wants her to lay in bed with her all day and he's like please just lay in bed with me you don't need to go cycling like i just want to spend more time with you and finally one day she like gives cycling up to be with him and that's like when she's like i love this man because she gave up her most routine thing for a guy and i was like that is so me like i will not work out in the morning to, and lay in, to lay in bed with you longer like I'll skip the gym for you. That's when that's when you know I like you. That that's true because you, but you have to know with you you are so yeah. regimented. Giving up a routine is like a big deal for me. It's like moving in. Yeah. It's like yeah, propose. And giving you my space. Yeah. Giving you some of my medicine cabinet. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's met share sharing the space letting you keep clothes over that seems like that would be big yeah okay i'm gonna read you I've, i want to read you these icks now that we're doing this okay that i was in the car on the way to the hamptons and i was with like three girls and they were they had their um it was vic and m and they had their ick lists on their phones and they were reading them and i they were so specific that i typed these out so you could hear them and tell me what you thought perfect ready i'm ready 
okay, number one, doesn't tip well. Gross. Agreed. Yeah. Is not nice to the wait staff. Gross. Is obsessed with the weekend. Isn't that the a- band or the weekend? That's what I said. Too. The weekend <laughs> days. Like, do- like, doesn't, like, wants to rage so hard on the weekends because he doesn't like his date. Like, he's like, Monday through Friday sucks, so I love the weekends. I feel like that's, like, so college. I guess, yeah, I guess it depends what they're doing on the weekend. Like, if, because a lot of people, like, if, I mean, I love the weekends, but, like, if someone's just excited to get fucked up, then that's, like, red flag but if they're just like i'm so excited so i can like hang out with my friends and my family and do things i love then i'm like yeah i love that for you right like a day off is nice but not like i live for the weekend yeah no 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 no. um <laughs> has a lot of followers on social media disgusting i knew you would like that one i love a man with under like 500 followers if you have a thousand followers i'm like mm-hmm. right right like mm, that's fun mm. i like you i'm okay then they call these licks like that they liked and oh, it, i love licks yeah like it can lick um Oh, backing up with one hand. That's hot. Reversing the car. One no, hand. No, knowing how to parallel park without yes. like the first, no, getting the parallel park the first time. Can drive. <laughs> Just simply can drive. If a guy can't parallel, like if they mess up parallel parking the first time, I'm like, ew. If they can, and if they can reverse, just like throw it in, and they're like good little driver. With their arm behind you. Yes. Oh. And their hat backwards. Did you not just melt? I didn't even write that one I just down. Got but a little, like a little horny. And then the, and then, <laughs> I'm just Jordan is sweating. And then the other one, Ed's the only other one I wrote down, but loosening a tie. Like <gasps> had a had a big day at work and then a little tie loose, and it's like, tell me you got it together without telling me you got it together. Or when they come in and like, you know, I don't know if guys still do this because I don't know exactly what dress attire looks like because people don't wear it here. But remember back in the day when our dads would wear like a white shirt underneath their button up yes. and like a few of the buttons are unbuttoned. You can see their white shirt because, like, they're not. And I'm not referencing my dad here. I'm talking about other guys. And I do not think my dad's hot. <laughs> but like, it was because they had just taken off their tie. Yes. And you're like, that's hot because, like, you could tell they just got done with work. You can see their white shirt a little butt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the business mm-hmm. is over. Business right. is over. Business is done for the day. I know. I was like, that meant like I'm coming home. That's a lick, right? Aren't those good though? I thought they were so specific. I was like, these are yeah. really good. Yeah. They did a good job with that, so shout out to them. You know what a, a lick is, too? What? When um, a guy, like, asks you what you want, and he's like, don't worry, I'll order. Like, because remember how we talked about one time someone orders for you, it's like, ew, but if they, like, ask, like, what do you want, and they make sure, like, you have everything, and then they, like, just take charge and order it for you. And and you know what I also think is cool, because I watched someone do it this weekend, a bit of an over order. A bit of a, but a bit of an, okay, so I know your dietary restrictions, I'm going to order a lot, and then everyone can graze. I'm like, Thank you for that. Love an order or over orderer, and and he just takes charge and he just orders a ton and then you get to pick and there's it's like when a man eats a lot of food. No, stop. (laughs) If a guy eats less than me, I'm fine. And like I get it in the beginning stages of dating, they will be polite, but once they start to show you their real appetite, you're like, oh, like (laughs) what makes you feel better? Than him being like, I'm really hungry. You're like, perfect. When, I'm a little less hungry, which is awesome, but I'm still hungry. When a man can pick you up without shaking. That's got to be. That's just got to be. That's just <laughs> got to be entry level. When a guy throws you over his shoulder. That's cute. That's a lick. It's a lick. That's a Licking lick for it. me. Ooh, what, these are fun. What's a few more? Oh. I feel like I'm going to get like. Oh. um, Because I have some, but I don't know if I'm allowed to have some. Everyone has licks. What? What? curbside he puts himself (laughs) curbside one time a long time ago i was on a date with this guy and we were walking and i was on the curb he literally like like took his hand in my back pocket and pulled me with his hand in Mm -hmm. my back pocket and like moved me against traffic a simple a simple (laughs) moment of taking charge it's like (laughs) done when they can just hand when they can just handle any situation it's just like play ball when someone can just take care of you. Yeah, it's like, you got a problem? Oh, I fixed it. When someone's like, oh, no, I'll figure out the plan. They're just like, check your email. Did it. It's like, done. Ugh. Already bought the tickets. Done. Melt. Done. Planned everything. Done. Check. Just show up. Checkmate. Here's bitch. your here's your outfit. <laughs> okay. Wear this. Meet you at four. Done. Melt. Takes you to a winery. Done. <laughs> done. <laughs> now I'm getting too persistent. I was like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I love licks. No, isn't that cute? Yeah. Licks. Okay, well, this was such a fun episode. Yeah. Um, I, got, I just got hungry. AB, uh, do you want to do what you do best? 
Is it the thing? Is it what I do best in life, or do I do other things good in this? That I just do this, like. Ab, do this one thing that you do best because you do so many other really best things in life. Well, I just wanted to know. Oh, you, everything you do is the best. No. 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 Some things you do are the best, and this is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> follow us in the in, in what I'm so good at is follow us on Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and leave us a five-star review. And as always, go back and watch it on YouTube. Did you listen to it on the podcast? Go watch it on YouTube. It's so much more interesting there. I watched this past episode on YouTube over the weekend. Me too. I watch every single one on YouTube. Miss your face. I was like, I'm going to turn on the TV. That's what I did. I know, I've never <laughs> I don't even subscribe to the YouTube channel. <laughs> Anyways, on that note, we love you guys. Bye. <laughs>